This episode was proudly made possible by Subaru. For as long as I can remember, I've had a soft spot for love and melancholy. And I think those two things are intimately interrelated, right? Love and sadness, they, they, they exist in the same space. There's a reason the filmmaker Cameron Crowe uses the term happy sad to describe those moments that move us, that swell us, that we become engorged with emotion. And we're also, you know, a little bit like, oh man, I'm not so sure if that's making me that happy or if I'm sad, I can't really tell. And uh, Roland Barthes uh, explored this beautifully in his book, A Lover's Discourse. There's a couple lines in it that I really love. He says, the first thing we love is a scene, which is seen for the first time. Curtain parts, and what had never been seen is devoured by the eyes. It's distinct, abrupt, framed. It is already a memory. And this is the line that really gets me. This idea that when we're struck by love, it is immediately already a memory. The moment is happening and you're already mourning the fact that the moment will end. This intertwining of melancholy, of loss, that is literally <laughs> embedded in the experience of rapture is what's sort of so unique and mesmerizing about love, but also what makes it so tragic, right? There's a reason that Roland Barth cites love as the romantic solution to the problem of death. <laughs> that our lovers act as stand-ins in a staged, managed resurrection where the pilgrim without faith can die and live again. These death and rebirth simulations allowing us to finally to turn our lovers into gods and goddesses, to be saved by them. It's every pop song, it's every romantic movie you've ever seen, you know the feeling, it moves us to tears. But who cares? Because as Camus says, life should be lived to the point of tears. So fall in love or die trying, right? Be sure to check out Second Chance Subaru at revision3.com slash Subaru.